Hey everyone, it is now July and I've had about a week and a half to play with the new release of NX2506 and it just came out here in June and I have to say that I really like it. There's a lot of really great updates and there's some extremely powerful tools that have been introduced or ways to do things. So I'm going to get into one of the things that is not actually listed inside of the help documents and I'd really like to get this out because it's going to be a very useful set of capabilities for everyone. Anyway, before I get into it, if you would please do me a favor, and that's like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you know somebody that this could help, please pass this along. So the first thing you're going to notice is there are some interesting shadows. Those shadows, those little ambient shadows I think make all the difference in the world. I really like it. The way that the lighting hits the part just gives you a better ability to see what you're working on. And this is in the help docs, but you see it, I gotta talk about it, but there it is, ambient shadows. Now that I've been playing around with 2506 for about a week and a half, I am very used to it. I got used to it very quickly. I like it, and now I'm a little irritated when I have to go back, which is pretty much every project I'm working on. But anyway, regardless, I digress. Let's go back to what I was going to originally talk about. So I have the model set up with a couple of feature groups, one called cavity, one called core. and. The feature groups will work with any type of Boolean, but there are some little differences in their application. Now, let me explain. When I go into Unite, for example, notice I really don't see anything different. I can pick the feature group, and then the tool, I can pick the feature group. Notice there's this little button for the tool. I cannot use this button for Unite as a target. And what this button is, is what's called include sheet bodies. I cannot use a sheet body as part of a target when I am uniting. There are tools called emboss, like those types of tools that allow us to do it. They're separate tools, they do something a little differently. Um, patch, that you know, that, that kind of thing. But I cannot have a sheet body as for my target when I'm doing Unite. So that's why that happens. Now, I'm going to select OK. There's my Unite. They're now united. I have an edge. I can come in here, put in my edge blend, and voila, loveliness. Man, those shadows look really good, don't they? I really like them. All right, now I'm going to undo, undo. This time I want to go into subtract. Okay, I'm going to pick my cavity and pick my core. It's kind of set up with the subtraction in mind, so I'm going to go use subtract. Now notice with the target, I do have that option because I can subtract a solid from a sheet body. When you make this solid, you might have used some surfaces. You might have used some sheet bodies. Maybe it's a thicket. Maybe there's something in there that had to be trimmed away with a sheet body. And you don't want that sheet body to be affected by whatever it is you're doing. So that's why this toggle exists. So if you have sheet bodies in there, you may want to, and don't want them to be affected, you may want to turn this off. I do not want to include sheet bodies. And the reason why is the subtraction has a link to the feature group. Now to demonstrate, let me go ahead and hide this. Let me show this. To demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and hide the subtraction. Everything gets hidden. Let me hide that as well. I'm going to go in and make a sketch on my XY plane. and put in a rectangle and yes 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 there are some updates in the sketcher as well these are talked about in the help documents 
and I will make some content about this later on, but I do really like the updates to the Sketcher. I think they've done the Sketch tool overall a great service by making some of these modifications. Go ahead and close that. Let me show the solid. Yep, there it is. Let me take this fella and push it over here. Ah, put it right over there. What the heck? Why not? Now I'm going to finish. Notice it's outside. I'm going to do an extrusion. Let me reverse that. And for this, I'm going to go minus 20 because I always like to come back out of the part when I do any kind of subtractive manufacturing like this. Imagine a cutter is going in there. It doesn't start right at the face. In theory, it drives through the face. OK, there are those lovely little shadows again. I'm going to go into my edge blend, pick this, pick this, pick this, pick this, say 15, apply, let me hide this fella, pick the bottom, we'll go to 10. Okay, now I was very careful to not select anything, obviously, to this subtraction, so that way I can reorder this. Okay, we all know about timestamp. We all know about that. I'm not talking about anything new or explosive there. That's just the nature of it. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to move this into this feature group. This message is going to flag up. The number of tool bodies has changed. Okay, it's just an update warning. And if it's a failure, it'll give you a report. That's what it's doing. But notice the solid. Notice... The subtract has a little warning there. Bodies have changed. Because I put it into this body, what ended up happening is it did the subtraction. It is now doing that subtraction. So anything that I put in here as a solid will then automatically be subtracted out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, make another feature group. We'll call it Unite. And then I am going to select OK. So at this point, I'm not going to put anything in it. Let me make it active as well. So when I start sketching, put in my sketch. Again, I'm going to hide this so I don't accidentally pick something. It's just me being very particular. I'll show the sketch of the original so I know where it's at as a reference. And then I will draw in my rectangle. Rectangles seem to do a wonderful job for me. And I'm going to finish. I'm going to extrude this. Reverse. Start off at zero. Select OK. And then click on this. Let me show my subtraction. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it up here. OK, it's before the core. Notice that it intersects that pocket. So I'm going to come up here to the Unite, make that the in-work object, and then do an actual Unite. Actually, let me do it the right way. Let me pick the cavity, and then the Unite. Select OK. Come back to my subtraction. So if I have more stuff that I want to add to this, unite to this, what I do is I come up here, and then all I need to do is, and I'll just do a cheat. I'm just going to copy and paste. Double click on that sketch. Put this over here, finish, okay, and then extrude. Could have done the extrusion as well. Go to my Unite, it updates, it's included. Go to my subtraction, everything updates, and it's beautiful. And this is really nice, okay? 
This is really, really nice. This is super powerful. I'm going to go to Edge Blend. And as a lot of you know, I'm very specific about the way I like to pick things. So I'm going to go to Unite. I'm going to pick that. Unite with my feature intersection. And those are the edges. Okay. I'm going to go back in here. I am going to make, oh, I'll just do this because I'm lazy. Copy, paste, select OK. Double click on that fella. Take you, come over to here. Finish. I might get an issue with the edge blend right here. Let's see what happens. Okay, that unite went. The subtraction went. The edge blends went. Okay, now I can take this and move this up here if I really want to. Probably would do that in the real world just to keep it clean. So I, I hope you can see the absolute profound nature of being able to use booleans on feature groups and to limit what it's going to do the boolean on with that little toggle right here the include sheet bodies so this is one of those things i do believe it's going to at least for me profoundly affect the way that i design things and I have completely changed the way I do things because of design groups and a little bit with feature groups. But now with the combination of those two and being able to do these kinds of things, there's a lot of thinking I have to do to come up with various methods that are involved in that. And boy, I will come up with something.